please welcome back to the stage. I'll say it, it is amazing the dresses you can get for four pounds these days. Woo! At the YMCA on Wellfield Road. Woo! Wonderful dresses which you can then take apart to make into much nicer dresses. Woo! This was monsoon. Ooh, it's silk. Yeah. I know, it's fucking nice to get out of all that polyester. <laughs> oh my goodness. How was your interval? Good. Did anyone make a friend? Yeah. Did anyone make a friend? <laughs> Did you use that condom? We were all thinking it. Did anyone find love? Love in the interval. Oh. That's my Ariana Grande impression. I'm very good at them. Uh, you know, I decided last, last autumn, at the tail end of last year, that I would, um, funny tail, because it's like a butt. <laughs> I decided I would find love. Aww. Such mixed reviews. <laughs> I decided I would get back out there into the dating pool, you know, tip my little toe in. So um, I downloaded Bumble. Aww. If you don't know what Bumble is, um, it's like Tinder, but with unexamined white feminism. <laughs> <laughs> The girl boss goes first. <laughs> it's me, I'm the girl boss. <laughs> anyway, I, I, I truly, I don't enjoy dating and I decided that um, I would try and keep it as economic as possible, you know. So I decided that I would try and do a one woman bachelorette. <laughs> like the TV show, The Bachelorette, yes? yes. Okay, so I decided I would get as many dates as I could in a shorter period of time. Smart, clever, economic. So, I lined up three dates in one week. Yes. If you're wondering how I did that, I'll turn around again. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking sells itself. <laughs> also, all of my profile pictures were me in front of my wood-burning stove. <laughs> Men love it if you can catch your fire. <laughs> I'm wearing a sticky bra, don't worry. We're not free in the nip this evening. <laughs> That's extra. <laughs> anyway, and also the category of man, well, you know, the caliber was pretty fucking low. So, three dates, one week. Let's go. Bachelor number one, a park date. <sighs> It's fine. You know, I get out the house, I get my little steps in. That's all you can really ask for at this point. <laughs> Bachelor number two, a coffee date in town. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I show up to this date, this man decides that I am not funny. Oh. <laughs> I am coming up with some incredible bits and this man is just like, the whole date. <laughs> I'm coming up with this one. I was thinking, because this is like last year, I was thinking a lot of the time about Tom Holland. You know, spider twink. I was thinking a lot, as we all were at the time, about how small his mouth is. <laughs> you don't notice it in the movies, but like when he's talking in his little English accent, he's like really small. And I was thinking a lot at the time about how Zendaya must have to feed him a single grape at a time. <laughs> And she has to like hold it in there until it can swallow. <laughs> because otherwise the pressure will build up and it can ping out and hit her in the eye. Thomas, you almost ruined the Met Gala. <laughs> You're lucky this year's theme was pirates. <laughs> She'd have to wear an iPad. <laughs> I imagine they do each other's accents at home. Anyway, I'm coming up with that. <laughs> I can wait. <laughs> 
so I'm coming up with this, you know, stellar, stellar material, fresh. He then tells me a very long story. It's a, very, it's a full 15 minute story about the time he went to go see the movie adaptation of Les Miserables. Thank you, French. <laughs> with a woman who talked a lot during the movie. 15 minutes. That movie came out in 2012. Fresh. Anyway, bachelor number two, more like bachelor number two. Anyway, anyway. A dud. Bachelor number three. Ooh. Cocktails at the Botanist. Yeah. Have we all been to the Botanist? Yeah. Oh, if you haven't been, the best way of describing it is that it has um, a bridge inside. Like it has like a little fake bridge with a little fake river. It's um, an adult rainforest cafe. <laughs> Anyway, there are three very important things you need to know about Bachelor number three. Number one, he's very handsome. Yes. Oh, he's very handsome. Number two, he has ghosted me before. Oh. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> number three, he is very handsome. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, anyway, anyway. So we're going to the botanist and I'm like, okay, I'm going to dress up because if this date is a fucking dud, at least I'll have like a cute little outfit. I can take a little photo, you know? So I wear this slinky little low cut number, not this lower cut. <laughs> I have to glue it to my body with eyelash glue. <laughs> That's important for later. <laughs> I'm wearing these like beautiful new boots that I just got off eBay. I love, they're like a stiletto boot. I wore heels to this date. Impressive. I know he's very handsome. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm halfway down a slightly, a slightly damp Queen Street before realizing there's no grip on the bottom of these shoes. <laughs> so I'm like sliding down to the step, I'm like, he's handsome, I gotta get there. I get there, oh, girls, <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Ticks every single one of my boxes, if you know what I mean. Mm, handsome, laughs at my jokes, meets me in public. <laughs> A criteria, a bar very low, rarely met. <laughs> anyway, he buys three rounds of cocktails at the, co at the botanist. We're having a wonderful time. Captain Moneybags is laughing at all of my B plus material. I'm there having the time of my life, basically workshopping this show at him. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, should we get another? And we're three rounds in. I'm like sipping my little, the dregs of my Paloma, like, I'm not worth it. <laughs> I was really worried somebody was going to go, ah, and I would have to turn around again. <laughs> I'll do it anyway. <laughs> I just licked the microphone, gross. <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, so we're three drinks in. I'm having a wonderful time with this man, and I get an incredible idea. Can you guess what the idea is? Oh. I'm going to sleep with him. <laughs> And I do! <laughs> thank you, thank you. So we're back at mine. I've peeled off this dress. Sticky shoulders. <laughs> I've, you know, stripped him naked and checked him once over for any suspicious tattoos. <laughs> Not falling for that one again. <laughs> if you know, you know. <laughs> anyway, so we're there. Me, completely naked on top of him. The goddess Hickman in all her glory. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Uh, thank you. There I am, completely naked on top of this man. The goddess Hickman in all her glory. A bright light shining from behind me. A choir singing in the distance. My hair. <laughs> blowing in the wind. <laughs> and it is in this moment that I decide to do an impression. <laughs> of Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> do it. And I say, have you ever had such delicious soup out of a twink's ass? <laughs> I 
I've never seen Seinfeld. (laughs) But it felt very relevant in the moment. (laughs) Anyway, anyway. Just, you know, in case you were wondering, obviously no. This was not my first boudoir impression. (laughs) What do you think I am, a fucking amateur? No, this is a tongue twister, but... Once, in an attempt to stop a man from prematurely ejaculating, I once did an impression of Margaret Thatcher. (laughs) The lady's not for coming. (laughs) Did it work? (laughs) No, and now I'm pregnant. (laughs) Thank you. Anyway, in a shocking twist, this man continued, I mean, it's not that shocking, this man continued to want to have sex with me that evening. (laughs) On the basis that I stopped doing impressions. (laughs) And that I was quiet for at least five minutes so he could fuck me. (laughs) He's very handsome. (laughs) And I am a businesswoman, so I did negotiate 45 minutes, a blowjob, and I sat on his face. (laughs) (laughs) I got a brain for business and a body for spaghetti. In an even more shocking twist, this man continued to want to see me, like in public, suspicious. But I guess for bachelor number three, bringing it all back, for bachelor number three, I guess the rosebud was worth the thorns. (laughs) But now that I have ensnared a man with my feminine wiles, thank you. I thought, you know what, there are so many out of you. There are so many out of you. That's not a phrase. There are so many of you out there who haven't found love yet. And I thought it would be useful for me to share some little helpful tips and tricks for dating. For the girlies who can't. So they learn how. It is in the classical style. I've been around the world from Cardiff to Newport. (laughs) They're places. But in my life of romance, I've always come up short. They say just be yourself and love will come to you. I've made a list of things to never do. Getting a man is easy. Men are all pretty dumb. But finding a man who's handsome and sweet and can make you come, (laughs) it's a tricky one. Finding a man is easy. Men are an easy sport. But one way to a promising bow is just to call him short. They hate it. Oh, you have to restrain yourself, for when you're down on him and he's in sweet surrender, try not to do a tight five into his member. Is this thing on? <laughs> and then to make sure he's suitably distracted, I like to throw in a little wink. <laughs> He is here, and I have played the game. If he should disappear, I have only myself to blame. For I have won his heart for all eternity. And now I know, if he should go, perhaps it was my personality. Are you ready for our musical guest? Yeah! Are we in the 
musical guest have a lot in common. We're both models. Yes. Her in reality, me in my mind. <laughs> we uh, both recently were on television. You know, I was in that celebrity cameo of that episode of Casualty. <laughs> and she is a reoccurring character on the Netflix series Sex Education. <laughs> Similar credentials. <laughs> but we also share one very important thing in common. A dentist. <laughs> who we are both falling madly in love with. <laughs> You're telling me a man whose face I've never fully seen is gonna put both hands inside my mouth and tell me in spite of everything I'm doing an okay job. <laughs> and I'm not supposed to fall in love with him? <laughs> no! But we have both been trying in our appointments to plug the show. We're like, I hear that, I hear you, he can't we're his patients and we are trying them. <laughs> anyway, are you ready for a musical guest? Woo! Well then please, without further ado, welcome the absolutely phenomenal Asha Jane. Woo! 